How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Are you a glass half empty or a glass half full sort of person? Do you think of everything in terms of scarcity? Or do you spend your days thanking God for your prosperity? By the most simple, objective measurement of wealth, you're better off than 99% of the people in this world. And 99% of your ancestors, too. You have, and you have in great abundance. And yet I'd wager to gather that you continue to think in terms of want and lack, poverty and scarcity. Why is this? Because your heart is never satisfied. Your heart is restless, greedy, selfish. You want it all and you want it now. You'll never be content because you never have enough. God gives you to eat of every true tree in the midst of the garden except for that one and then you'll have that one too. So your whole life is working and consumed by getting more consumables. And finally, when you can't work anymore, now you look back and you lament how little you have to show for yourself. As this is the condition of your heart, according to God's word, so it affects every aspect of your life, from your house and home to your family and work, even in this congregation and school, nothing is ever enough. You apply imaginary hopes and dreams to everything. Now perhaps these all begin as just goals that you're striving for. You set your hopes for the yield, for the target, for the sales goal, for the school enrollment, for the church attendance. And for a while, you keep at it, trying to attain that goal. But in the striving, it keeps, keeps seeming to get more distant. And what happens when you fall short? What happens when you never get what you thought you could get? What do you do when it all seems futile and a waste of time? The cruel cousin to greed is despair. Think of the one who plays the lottery every day. He hopes, he's committed. Someday he's going to recoup all those losses. But almost no one ever does. If he's honest, he'll look back and he'll see how much he wasted. Every dollar, or a dollar every day, every day over your working life, that's $15,000 wasted, down the drain, gone. And then what are you left with? As you look back on all that which you wasted, hopelessness, if not in the midst of it, definitely at the end of it. Why? Because the one who played the lottery every day put his hope where there is no promise. Maybe you do the same. You expect the harvest each year. You hope that the market will bounce back. You believe that if you put the right guy in public office, then it will right the economic ship. You think that if you were running the church, these walls would be busting at the seams. The school's enrollment would be way up. You think that if you did whatever trendy thing your friend's church was doing, that we'd have an explosion of new members. But it's vain hope. Selfish thinking out of terms of, again, scarcity. What you don't have, rather than rejoicing in what you do. And that makes it a lie, at least according to God's word. You're too busy looking for more to see what's yours already. Now, I don't know how your farm or your business is doing today. I know that most people today say they can't, or at least a fair number of people say they can't pay their rent, and we have record high numbers of unemployment, at least in recent memory. Maybe you have been hard hit by the economic disaster that is the stay-at-home order. 
And I'm not saying that our situation here at this church and school isn't any more difficult. The future any less uncertain or our prosperity isn't being threatened. But I would suggest that this is nothing new. There are some in this congregation, maybe even in the pews today, who've been through a Great Depression, through multiple world wars, who've seen great political and economic instability. They've even lived through this congregation, perhaps, seeing splits and divides, and even our church body, the Missouri Synod, splitting in the 60s and 70s. Maybe even today you're looking around and what you see is decay and that which you built up crumbling. You remember the lean years and you remember the years of plenty. But those who remain and those who went before us, who now rest in faith out back from all their labors, will remind you that this is nothing new. And they'll remind you what got them through, or rather, who saw them through. No matter what their life was like physically, they were always rich, with a glass not half full or half empty, but rather completely full, a cup that runneth over. Of course, you know where this is going. Our brothers and sisters who came before us, who made it through, they had Jesus, his promises, his gifts, not their vain, selfish hopes and dreams. And you have Jesus, you have his promises, and you too have his gifts. No matter what you already have is more than you could ever hope for. And yet, your heart is selfish, wanting and never finding. But I love the way that one church father said it. Our hearts are restless until they find their rest in Jesus. So today, Jesus looks upon you, and he has compassion on you. He sees your hunger, and he feeds you. You know your need, and he provides for you. He takes your eyes off of the vain pursuit for more and bigger and better, and instead fixes your eyes on him. You have been with him for these three days, and you hear his words. It is finished. It is finished. Everything and anything that your heart wanted is yours already in Jesus. So why then has your pursuit of happiness been so fruitless? Why is nothing ever enough? Because Jesus has already given you what you need. You were adopted by God, the Father, through holy baptism and clothed in your brother Jesus. You are forgiven of all your selfish greed and despair by Jesus' suffering and death. Your hunger and thirst to be enough for God and enough for heaven has been satisfied as Jesus feeds you his body and blood that makes you more than enough, holy and righteous in his name. So today you could be like those disciples, look around and in desperation cry out, how can one satisfy these people with bread here in this wilderness? Jesus, look around. Don't you see that COVID-19 is raging? Economies are collapsing. The political sphere is devolving into struggles for power. We're in the wilderness. There's never going to be enough. Or you could be like the faithful who followed after Jesus, who listened to him. When he says, sit down, they do, and they listen. Be still, and know that I am God. And he took the seven loaves and gave thanks, broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And they set them before the multitude. They also had a few small fish, and having blessed them, he set them also before them. So they ate and were satisfied. And they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. That's Jesus speaking to you. He set before you a re rich feast, an unending feast of forgiveness, life, and salvation. It's more than you could ever want for or hope for. It's all that you'll ever need. You are his and he is yours now and forever. So may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen.